what a week. The glory of God manifested in the eclipse. Stunning view. The muddiness of humanity shown in the escalating tension between Israel and Iran. What do we do about it? Some look to the story of the resurrection of Jesus' mission as a way of escaping from it all. But maybe we're being enlisted into God's mission, God's promise to restore creation through repentance and forgiveness. Pastor Rob addresses this in his sermon today. I'm glad we're together for worship this third Sunday after Easter, and I hope this time together is a blessing for you. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm Pastor Rob Miles, and welcome here. This is our third Sunday in the Easter season, so let's just make sure you've been practicing while I was away. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Right? We're still throughout the Easter season, so whenever you hear uh, me or anybody else say that, that is the, the good and righteous response there. So we're continuing to celebrate the resurrection these weeks, as always. And uh, if there are young children here, uh, again, we have a playground in the back there and also busy bags. If you're calling in, I invite you to turn down anything else in your house. But otherwise, I invite us all to take a breath and know that we have come this morning into the presence of the living Lord. Please rise as you are able. We worship in the name in which we baptize, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us together confess our sins. Jesus, you died on the cross for us and for the world. Forgive us for our sins against you and against our neighbor in thought, word, and deed. Jesus is risen. Sin and death have been defeated. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus, we have not followed you as we ought. Give us strength to follow you. Jesus is risen. Sin and death have been defeated. Your sins are forgiven. 
Forgive us for having your defeat and resurrection. Give us faith. Fill our hearts with the joy and power of your resurrection. Jesus is risen. Sin and death have been defeated. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Alleluia. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Together we join in singing in your red hymnals number 522 as we gather at your table. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading is from the first epistle of John, the reading of chapters 3, verses 1 through 7. The reading is found on page 321 of the New Testament Bible in the pew. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. We will see him as he is. And all who have, <clears throat> excuse me, and all who have this hope in him, in, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, and no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. The congregation is invited to read the psalm responsively. Answer me when I call, O God, of my right. You gave me a room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you. This is the day of Easter when this story takes place. Jesus stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hand and his feet. And while in their joy they were still disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, 
and their repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you all to be seated. Oh. Good morning, church. We invite the kids to come forward to a different spot today. So please join me and Miss Zoe over in this area today. We're glad to see you. Glad that so many of you are here today. We've got something new to introduce you to. Come on up, come on over. We're in a season now of Easter, and so we get to keep celebrating this awesome news that Jesus is alive. It's so amazing. And so for this season, these next few weeks, I've invited a guest to join us for the kids' sermon. In these next weeks, we will have a high school senior, someone in 12th grade, who will come and join us, and we're going to pick a window, a window in this church. You can look around at them, and each week we'll have a senior tell us about a window. So I'm going to ask three questions to Miss Zoe, who's our 12th grader here today. And the first question is one she might get asked a lot, so I thought let's just talk about it. Zoe, what's your next step after graduation? So I graduate high school in just a couple months, and I'll be here for the summer. And then in August, I'm moving to Valencia, Spain, where I am going to start my first year of school at Berklee College of Music, which is, in which is located in Boston, but I'll be in Spain for a year studying abroad. Wow. Zoe, that sounds amazing. What a really cool adventure that she's going to have. Well, my second question is, Zoe, which window amazes you today? So my favorite window in the church is this window back here called the West Window. And it's my favorite because my favorite time to worship and way to worship is through music. And I, I like to share my, my music with the church sometimes. And so Becky helps me do that. And after school, sometimes we rehearse around 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the day. That's the time that we normally rehearse. And during that time, the sun is way over there. And it hits that window so that all of the colors just paint themselves on this wall. And I think it is so beautiful and amazing. Wow. Today in the gospel, boys and girls, we hear that the disciples were amazed. Jesus comes and appears among them and they're a little scared, and they're full of joy, and they're amazed. So I've asked Zoe to share with us what about this window brings her amazement about Jesus. My favorite part about this window is the way that it ties in faith and God's creation with the physical world that we have here on earth. And I'm going to tell them, Zoe, yep, that if laser you boys and girls here. <laughs> want to turn around, Zoe has a laser you pointer. You see a little red dot? So you can see gonna, what she's going to go show you. So here at the bottom, there's, there's man. That's all of us in an image. And then above him, there's images of here's a burning city. You see the f smoke and the ash. Um, this represents the green and the plants that we have here on earth. Up here we have two hands reaching towards each other, kind of like the physical hand of mankind and then, and then the hand of God, and they're connecting there. And I think up here, this is my favorite part, we have outer space up at the tippity top, the moon and the sun, it kind of looks like the eclipse that we just had last week. Um, all of these things are parts of the physical world that really amaze me and remind me of how much of a gift that we have from God in the world that we live in. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Well, I invite you kids, but the whole congregation today, when you have a moment to, to turn around or to leave church that way and let yourself be amazed by what we see in this window here, reminding us of the amazing ways that God surprises us and shows up when we know that we need him. So let's please join in prayer, and then uh, Zoe will give you a kids' bulletin to take back with you today. So please, let's bow our heads and fold our hands, and the whole church can repeat after me as we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For amazing us. For amazing us. Help us tell others. Help us tell others. About your amazing love. About your amazing love. Amen. Amen. Okay. 
Okay, so come on up, boys and girls, before you head back to your seats. It's wonderful to worship with you today in this amazing way. Yeah, you got it. Oh, you got a maze. Did any of you travel this week to see the eclipse? We're speaking of the eclipse right in the window here. And did any of you at least have the cool glasses that allowed you to look up into the clouds and uh, see the sort of the way in which the sun kind of became like the moon, like a little bit of an orange crescent in those glasses? I think for many of us, we were uh, caught up, uh, motivated, inspired by the stories and the images of the eclipse this week. It was a chance for us to take a break from sort of the, the regular news cycle. It was a chance for us to overcome our, our normal political boundaries and with everybody just to be excited about this, to have our gaze lifted up to the heavens and be reminded of just how awesome and big and complex the world actually is. Because when we start to think about space, like right now there's this telescope, the James Webb Telescope, and it is seeing images of stars that are 13.1 billion light years away. Wow. That means that light travels 13.1 billion years to get to that telescope. I mean, that is just mind-blowing. And when we think about then the, the cosmos, we, we have this sense that there's a, an elegance and a, a complexity that, that reveal, that point toward a heavenly voice that is somehow breathing life and structure into the whole cosmos, illuminating it. And so again, our, our eyes this week were, were lifted to the grandeur and the glory of the heavens. But that didn't last very long, right? The news kind of quickly changed, and we were back to the normal sort of shenanigans of United States politics that we've sadly become used to. And then by the end of the week, we were learning, we were reading, we were watching about Iran then sending this, this armada of drones to Israel, a fear then we all had that our world was, was lurching towards a, a religious regional conflict, if not even World War Three Again, it was hard not to be agitated this week about what we were discovering was going on on planet Earth. But it's not simply the headlines that, that cause us heartburn or that keep us awake at night. This week I was working with a young family, and it was very eye-opening for me to work with them. And and to realize how, how tough it is for young families right now with the, the combination of, of high interest rates and the cost of child care, just, just how, how tough it is for a lot of people just to kind of make sure that every month they sort of can, can pay their, their bills. Again, there's all sorts of stuff in our, our daily life. We don't even need the headlines most weeks to realize how, how overwhelming life can be with diagnoses and worries about health and money and family. And it's uh, this uh, reality, there's a, a complexity to the life on earth, but, but rather than seem like it, 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 it reveals a, a cosmic creator, it just sort of reveals a cacophony of, of human sin and brokenness and just problems that just don't seem to go away, but just kind of seem to, to spawn and spur each other. Again, this week was one of those where I felt like in my, in my telescope, uh, the view came quite clear that the heavens have a majestic elegance, but, but here life on earth just feels kind of muddy and uncertain, so, so finite and fragile. So what do we do with this sort of this, this disparity, this, this tension between the, the glory of the heavens and the messy reality that we call life on earth. And as Christians, we certainly have something to proclaim and to say about that. For, for we, we believe, we confess, we bear witness that, that Jesus is, yes, of, of heavenly origin, but also of earthly origin, that somehow he's the nexus, the bridge between these two. 
And sometimes when we, we start to think about that and articulate it, we, we end up with, with the theology that kind of works like this, this that, that Jesus has come from heaven, and he's, he's sort of come almost like, like to hover above earth and to kind of, you know, kind of beam us out of this messy reality, right? That, that when we die or, uh, or when he comes again, again, that we're going to sort of just be pulled out of here. We can rise above and escape, escape the, the troubles of this world, and, and often then, then the mission of Jesus Christ becomes framed within a sort of a, a rescue or an escape mission to get us who have been kidnapped here out of our, our hostage situation. Today's gospel story from Luke lets us know that there's something else going on, though, that there's a, another way to think about the heavens and the earth and how they meet in, in Jesus Christ. For when Jesus returns, today again we're, we're hearing the words of the resurrected Christ. He's been crucified and he's risen and he, and he comes back and, and he declares peace to them. And rather than say, hey, here's your packing list, get ready, I'm going to take you away from here. There's no packing list given to the disciples. There's no exit or escape plan. Rather, Jesus gives them a to-do list. Jesus sends them with marching orders. And in fact, Jesus lets them know that he's come back in the body. Right? They can feel his wounds. They can touch him. And then he asks for a piece of fish. Which, for a second, I, I want you to think just a bit, again about how down to earth the resurrected Jesus is. In order for us to eat food, we have to have bacteria in our mouth and bacteria in our gut. Jesus, the resurrected Christ, is carrying a trillion bacteria cells in his body once again. You cannot get more down to earth than eating a fish sandwich with your friends. Jesus has come back in the flesh, and he's not, again, given any escape or any packing list. Rather, he's, he's told them what they're to do here on earth. What Jesus is revealing here is not simply the intellectual proposition that we believe in the resurrection of the body, although, yes, we do. Jesus is showing us here that the, the fundamental constant of the universe, okay, the fundamental constant of the universe are not simply what physics have derived as, as 26 constants, like the speed of light or the gravitational force between two different sources of matter. However constant those may be, those are not actually the fundamental constant on which the universe is built. Nor, nor, because again, Jesus has overcome, Jesus has overcome sin and death in his crucifixion and resurrection, nor is the cosmos built finally on, on human sin and the powers of death. This is also not the constant that the universe is built on. But the universe is going to be built, has only ever been built on the faithful love of God. Again, the true constant in the universe, the thing that cannot change, the thing that orchestrates and organizes the whole cosmos is the faithfulness of God. And this is the confession of the Old Testament. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love is our God. This was the confession for over a millennia and still is to this day. Slow to anger and abounding in chesed, abounding in steadfast, in faithful and enduring love. And that's really the problem with an escape theology. Because if we simply believe that, that Jesus has come to get us out of here, that would mean that God had to give up on earth, that, that human sin finally got to write the story, that human sin had won, that, that the human proclivity to violence, as powerful as it was, had, had written the final story. But you see, again, the, the fundamental constant in the universe is God's faithfulness. And so when Jesus shows up, and he shows up in the flesh as an earthling, as he shows up to eat food, as he shows up to give his disciples instructions about how to live in this life, he's revealing his faithfulness. 
He's showing that God will not give up on earth and that the crucifixion and resurrection are like D-Day. They're, they're a beachhead now, that, that earth fundamentally is going to be reclaimed for God's holy purposes. Again, earth is going to be reclaimed fully, made new, the sin defeated, death destroyed. This is what is happening now. And we, yes, indeed, are witnesses of this. Today we have a baptism. And this baptism, again, isn't simply about, nor is your baptism. We're going to have many baptisms throughout this season of Easter. And baptism isn't simply an escape promise to a child. Baptism is a promise of God's faithfulness to that child, to that teenager, or to that adult, that God intends never to give up. For indeed, today's gospel isn't simply the intellectual claim that God is faithful to creation or that God is faithful to humanity. Today we, we hear in this the promise, the promise given to you in your baptism, that God is faithful to you. And the one constant that you can build and organize your whole life around is God's faithful love for you. For indeed, Christ has overcome your sin, overcome your death, overcome your ignorance and hardness of heart in the cross for you and is raised gloriously to life everlasting. For what is finally at stake here is not actually whether we believe in the bodily resurrection. Important and as foundational as that is, what is really at stake here is whether we believe that Jesus Christ is alive in our lives today. Again, what is not at stake here is simply what we think happened 2,000 years ago, but what is happening in our lives today. For, for you see, the, the Christ has, has come. Christ has come not to escape, but to reveal God's faithfulness for this creation and for us. And so what's, what's going to happen now? What's going to happen is that Jesus is going to challenge his disciples. And he's going to tell them, of course, to spread the good news that he has died and he has risen. But he doesn't stop there. He doesn't stop there. He says, and proclaim repentance and forgiveness in his name. And that's crucial because, again, this isn't just about an event that happened 2,000 years ago. This is about Jesus being alive. This is about Jesus' spirit working in our lives. This is about whether we believe humanity is on an endless cycle of tit for tat, of retribution and violence and resentment, or if there is a new day that is dawning. And so Jesus says that there is such a thing as repentance, and repentance means that the human heart shifts, that the human heart turns, that our minds are opened again to God's love and God's forgiveness in our lives, that we believe that strange and miraculous things can happen, that we believe we trust that the resurrected Christ is, is showing up in our lives, and that means that, that resentment and hurt between us and somebody else can be overcome, that, that tribal strife that is embedded in thousands of years of hatred can be overcome, that addiction can be overcome, that insecurities and fears, that hurts, the demons, that this all finally can be overcome. Again, that there is transformation and there is new life because forgiveness is on the loose in this world and the spirit of Christ is here to raise us up again and again to new life. My sense is that if you've come here to church today, there's probably a situation in your life that is in need of resurrection, that is in need of forgiveness. 
And in fact, for many of you, you may have gotten to a point where you've simply given up on that person, on that family, on that tribe, on that situation, where we just don't believe anymore that, that God could, could do something, and our hearts remain closed to the possibility of forgiveness. But I'm here to tell you that, no, indeed, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and he's on the loose in your life. And that means, again, that repentance is actually possible that forgiveness is real and actual. And so, so if you're there this day, I, I challenge you. I challenge you to respond to the faithfulness of God and faithfulness towards God now and to open yourselves back up to God's work of reconciliation, to God's power to change even our hearts. And then you see, when that happens, for yes, indeed, by and by, eventually it will, God's work of forgiveness and repentance will work themselves in our lives. When that happens, then I invite you further to heed the words of Jesus, to be the witness. I think this week about how many people wanted to show me pictures on their cell phones of cloudy skies, how excited people were to bear witness to the eclipse or what they saw. I'm curious in your life when God's repentance, when God has worked a change in you or in somebody else's heart, when, when forgiveness has happened, when you've felt that burden that it was let go of, when you've seen somebody else experience that forgiveness, when you've had mutual reconciliation? Have you gone around to your friends and, and showed them on your phone, see, see, this is what happened. This is where God showed up in my life. This is what Jesus is calling us to do, to bear witness, not just to the wonders in the sky that happen every couple of months or years, but to the wonders, to the repentance, and to the forgiveness, to the transformation that's happening in our lives and in our hearts and indeed in this world. And so this week, I want to bear witness to you and I've been thinking again the last day or two very heavily about war and about the intractability of tribal and religious conflict and, and how it seems like, again, it's so hard for us as humans to break those cycles of tit for tat, of bomb for bomb, of death for death. Seventy years ago, the United States bombed the town of Dresden in Germany. This was in response to a bombing of Coventry, and the bombing was carpet bombing, just, just row after row, wave after wave of bomber, just leveled this historic, beautiful town. And one of the things, uh, one of the, the many things that was destroyed in that was a church. And two summers ago, I got to visit one of the churches that had been bombed in Dresden. And it was very humbling to think, again, that it was my own nation that had participated. And again, we all know the complex history of World War II. But I saw, again, this, this church that was basically in rubbles. But, but over time, you see, church members had tried to rebuild it, and they were opposed by, by forces within communist East Germany. But, but finally, finally two years ago, there was an initiative by some various people in town, and this church was rebuilt. It was rebuilt as a youth center for this end of town that had become very, very uh, lower, lower income. And uh, there actually was a pastor who could be there and, and lead worship services and, and teach these youth and children that, about a safe space, about a place in which they could hear and learn about the word of God. They could hear the witness of the church over the centuries. Well, this was very moving for me to see, and, and so I had a, a pastor friend there in Dresden, and, and we decided that we would preach a joint sermon together. And so the next day, I, I got to preach in, in German in, in these two churches in Dresden, and it was so powerful for me as a pastor, as one whose nation had done the bombing, to witness, to bear witness to God's repentance, to God's forgiveness, to God's new life there, to God overcoming the, the deepest of, of hatreds there in, and violence in World War II. And you know what was really cool, too, is that the, uh, and as it turns out, the, 
The preaching text that day was Romans 6 about, about baptism and about God's new life and how the, the whole life is then one of discovering God's faithfulness, of hearing God's call to repentance and to receiving forgiveness. And so my, my prayer for the person who's baptized today is the same as my prayer for a youth who was baptized four years ago who spoke today. It's the same as really the prayer for all of us. And that is that in, in the waters of baptism, we would know forever that we have a promise, a promise from, from the faithful God that God will never abandon us and that even our sin and death have no final say in our life, but Jesus Christ and his mercy do. But I also pray that as this child grows, like all of us, there will be growth in faith, hope, and love. And that we, of course, will be faithful, discovering God's call to repent again and again, so that at the end of our lives, rather than somehow being proud of ourselves, we may simply, simply say that God is faithful and that our life will have been a witness to God's faithfulness. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Risen Lord, you died to forgive our sins, yet we often have trouble forgiving others. Open our hearts and hands to your kingdom's way of forgiveness and reconciliation. Draw us into repentance over ways in which we have hurt others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Risen Lord, we pray for the nations. Bring peace to communities torn apart by warfare. We lift before you people in Ukraine, the Middle East, and Sudan. Give wisdom to leaders. Bolster the courage of those who put themselves in danger to preserve the lives of others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Risen Lord, you send us out to be your body in this world. Give us strength and humility to serve others. We pray in thanksgiving for the group traveling to Ethiopia to provide medical care through the Meden Initiative. Continue to inspire and guide our efforts to help others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Risen Lord, we know many in need of your healing powers. Guide nurses, doctors, therapists, and medical professionals in our midst. We lift before you the names of our friends and family in need of your care, either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Risen Lord, fill our hearts with joy, trusting that one day faith will be sight, and that with our loved ones we will raise our hands and voices in praise of you. Lord, in your mercy. Joining our voices with your faithful ones in every time and place, we offer our prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. We greet one another in his name. I invite you all to be seated for a few brief announcements. Again, a warm word of welcome to those who are visiting with us. If you'd like to fill out one of the visitor tags and put it in the offering plates out there, we can uh, contact you, uh, follow up. We will actually have a welcome class next Sunday in between worship services, and that's for people that have been coming to St. Paul, and you maybe just have some more questions, want to know more about what the ministry here is like and where you may uh, find your part in that. Also, at the second service today, we'll have a baptism. I think just about every Sunday in the Easter season, we have a baptism. Um, but if you or somebody in your family is curious uh, about baptism, we'd, we'd love to talk and to sort of, uh, yeah, continue that, that conversation. In two Sundays on the 28th, we will have our annual meeting. Uh, and so the annual report will come out next week. And that is, and our annual meeting is really for the purpose of electing our church council and our endowment officers. Uh, next weekend is the Women of the ELCA's Day of Renewal, and that's on Saturday. I know they have a really uh, good attendance so far, but there is room for more people there. Also, in our weekly announcements this week, there is a, there's a reminder you can sign up for summer camp. That's available for both kids, youth, and adults. And I thank you all as a congregation. We, we subsidize heavily the kids who uh, go to camp, and that really encourages them to come and to invite their friends. And so I, I thank you for your generosity that allows so many kids, youth, and families to have that powerful experience. At this point, I invite us all to rise as we present our gifts.
We pray together. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty, merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, we praise your name and join their unending him. in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. After he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we do this, we proclaim the great mystery of faith. Christ has died Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And in that great hope, we pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Jesus Christ is alive today because God is faithful to creation, God is faithful to you. Sin manifested in so many terrible and violent ways is overcome can be overcome in our lives and transformed to do life. May that be so in your life. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep you in the love of Jesus Christ. Be blessed.